Hi guys, it's Jodie and this is Coffee Conversations, a show where we speak to a series of inspirational women from around the world who are challenging the status quo. On today's show, we've got a good friend of mine, Felicia George. She is both a summer and winter Olympian and we're gonna discuss things surrounding success and some writing that she's recently been doing. Can't wait for this conversation, um, so let's dive into it. Hey girl. Hey. We will get started. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here with you. Happy to have you on. So we're with Felicia George. You're both a summer and winter Olympian, um, competing for Canada in both track and field and bobsled. Also a bit of a boss outside of sports, um, hosting her own TED Talk and a podcast called The Diva Chronicles, if I'm correct. Not doing it anymore, but yes. <laughs> Was hosting a podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, girl. I really appreciate it. Um, you're in Grenada right now, right? Yes, I am. My family's from Grenada, so I'm actually down here training for the winter. Oh my goodness, amazing. How is it to be, to be back? It must be so nice to kind of get back to roots, especially at this crazy time. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm staying by my aunt, um, which has just been amazing having That's like so family nice. surrounding me and around me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she dropping a little plate, you know, all the food I grew up oh, eating and stuff. Love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, this, obviously, the weather is amazing. And so, yeah, it's been good. And it's obviously there's not a lot of um, COVID cases here. So that's kind of why I decided to come down here to train. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of my own little secluded space in Grenada. I'm going to just put a little plug for Grenada is one of the most naturally beautiful islands you'll ever find. So y'all need to go ahead, come out here and visit. <laughs> for sure. Pipe it all the way up. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it must be really nice to kind of, especially, yeah, like I said now, um, just be super focused on training and especially as like the world is so disrupted and I feel like so many people have had training disrupted. Obviously the Olympics was postponed. Um, how has it been to just really been able to like focus in on things? It's been good. I mean, obviously with that first lockdown that we had that was, and then the Olympics being postponed, that was like difficult and challenging for, I'd like to say every athlete. Um, it was a little bit of a mm -hmm. silver lining for me, though, because it's like, man, I got to spend so much time with family. Um, I was home in Toronto. I got to for like, sure. I have two twin goddaughters, so getting to spend time with them and do all of that. And so it was like I had this really nice reset. And then now I'm in this space where I'm like, I'm getting to like really focus in and do what I love again, which has been amazing. Um, my coach is down here with me. Um, so I just have everything amazing. that I feel like I need. Um, and I'm feeling good. I mean, there's something about having the sunshine on you. Feel like you give it a little extra energy. Oh, <laughs> um, sure. So yeah, no, it's been really for good. Sure, I feel sure. like I got my little bubble, my support system around me. So. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I feel like I, a lot of athletes I've spoken to, they've kind of felt like, obviously, initially the postponement of the Olympics was a bit of a blow, but so many athletes have had time to really reset i feel like we really don't have a lot of time for ourselves ever mm -hmm. we're always you know mm -hmm. focusing on the next thing the next thing um so i feel like for a lot of us it's kind of been a nice time to actually like you said spend some time with family um especially for me i've been able to um kind of focus on some some other projects like this one um and get some other stuff off the ground which i think is um super important. I feel like as athletes, we're very like tunnel visioned and very like, uh, kind of channeled into this one energy and one space. So I feel like it's been, uh, like you said, it's been a really nice, um, really nice refresh for sure. For sure. For sure. So I would really like to touch on your to start things off, touch on your Ted talk, which I watched, um, whilst I was doing my research, I'd seen it before, but I, I rewatched it, um, about the hidden keys to success, which just had 
so many amazing points and I feel like it's super relevant now, especially, um, you know, as we're kind of, like we said, resetting and, and getting back into things. Um, and you spoke us on really amazing things um, like knowing your why and having something bigger than you. Um, can you talk us through a little bit about um, your ideas of what success are? I feel like um, a lot of us, especially as athletes, we're so um, success is very this time, this medal, this uh, possession, yeah. winning, winning, winning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And um, that's a big thing I had to learn was learning what success meant globally and outside of that idea of of just winning and, you know, your whole um, perception of yourself being based on that. Um, Yeah. So can you just talk us through a little bit about, yeah, your ideas around around success? Um, Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because I feel like I've had to go through like a revamping of what I think success is. And I think we all as athletes kind of start in that place where we get Mm -hmm. so sucked into like, I got to win a medal. I have to run this time. I got to run a PB. And it's like, if you're not doing that, you just feel like you trash. (laughs) And that is like literally the worst worst place to be. You're putting all of your worth, all of your, you know, the time and energy that you put into something on, you know, things that you can't control. Um, So for me now, honestly, the way I look at track and anything that I kind of put myself into, it's really about being as authentic to myself as possible. And when I think back to like the moments of Mm -hmm. those races that felt amazing, those races that where I've like ran out of myself, it was like having this deep level of trust and confidence within myself and, and belief in who I am and what I'm capable of. And so going into practice, going into races, like I just want to have that feeling of like, deep-seated trust in myself so I feel like if I'm doing that I'm being successful um and that's how I kind of guide myself in a lot of ways where it's like am I being true to who I am um within that specific moment and am I trusting myself and I I think in a lot of the times we're in a situation where you know whatever success is you're gonna have to want to lean this way but that's gonna be me not being true to who you are and so it's sometimes making that tough decision to be like no I'm gonna take this route because I know that this is this feels good in my body. This feels good to me, right? And so, um, mm-hmm. you know, making the choice to choose myself. Um, and honestly, the more you do that, you'll find one, things start to feel easier. <laughs> and two, you will actually 100%. start to find a lot of those traditional success that we typically are looking for. Um, but yeah, it, it took me a long time mm-hmm. to realize that what I'm actually seeking is myself. Um, and so I'm just always looking to be more true to myself in whatever way that I can. I love that. Um, talking about staying true to yourself and that idea of staying true to yourself. I feel like a lot of the time, um, external pressures can have a huge impact on that and kind of doing what society tells you is, is right and doing what other people think, um, I feel like that's a really difficult thing to overcome and kind of stepping into your own power and and staying true to yourself. How did, is that something that you struggled with at all? Um, And if it is, how did you kind of overcome that and and really um, become confident enough to walk your own path and go against that, that grain? Well, I would actually say, so like light bulb for me was realizing how much, I think a lot of the times we put it on this external thing where it's like this other people are doing this to me and whatever, whatever, and Mm -hmm. people are telling me to do this and kind of starting to one, take responsibility for the beliefs that I've allowed to like take over my mind. And so it's not other people. It's my, it's me. I'm I'm believing that and I'm choosing that. And so once you realize that you're the person that's making that choice, you also have the choice to choose something different. Um, and so I think as long as we're putting it out on somebody else, it always feels like you're fighting against something and that's harder to do. And like you just said, stepping back into your power and understanding that you always have the possibility and ability to choose something different. Um, and I, I'm really big on just taking full responsibility. Anything that happens in my life, I take full responsibility for, Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't put it on anybody else, good or bad. Um, and so once you're in that situation, you, you're taking back your power and your ability to choose. Um, so yeah. 
Yeah, I absolutely, I love that. I love that for sure. Another huge part I really loved about your TED talk was acknowledging fear. I feel like a lot of successful um, people or people that have um, achieved big things seem to omit the part where they talk about the fact that they were scared. Like, and I feel like that is such a big reason as to why a lot of people don't feel um, any kind of, uh, they can't relate to successful people. They think of successful people as, and I put success in, in quotes, as, as other. And I loved that in your TED talk, you really touched on that, uh, acknowledging that fear and acknowledging that you do still have that voice inside of your head, that, that doubting, I think you called her Shirley. Um, I call mine Tina. Um, so I love that you okay. named that, but I feel like that is such an important, uh, thing. I feel so many people just miss that out. So yeah, tell us a little bit about, um, obviously you were talking about your transition into bobsled at, at that point. Um, but yeah, it would be super interesting to hear your insights into acknowledging that fear um and yeah. still just jumping into it anyway yeah yeah honestly going doing bobsleigh i mean i do a lot of crazy things in my life <laughs> mm -hmm. and so and it's just like every time i'm thinking about doing something there's always that level of like a little bit of doubt a little bit of like should i do this and then that first obviously you know leaving mm -hmm. track and then hopping into bobsleigh i've been doing track for 15 years yeah. how is this going to affect track you know what's going to you know, can I even make the Winter Olympics? So there's obviously all of that going on. And, mm -hmm. and then even starting it and literally, I'm telling you, the first three months I was scared to slide every single time I had to. I was like, girl, what you doing out here? Why are you, <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> what are you right? doing? <laughs> right? um, but yeah, so I mean, I think, and especially in that, um, through that experience, I learned that it's not, like having fear is like a normal response. And in general, the thing that mm -hmm. makes us um, kind of stop in our tracks is our resistance to that fear, our thinking that I'm not supposed to feel this and trying to fight against things. And the biggest thing that I've learned is like allowing 100%. whatever's here, like allow that to be. Yeah, I feel afraid, and but it's just an emotion. Like I, I can allow that to sit here and that doesn't mean that I have to act any kind of mm -hmm. way, right? And so once you realize that, okay, this is this is a response, this is my body telling me like, Hey, you're about to do something you've never done before. Hey, this is something totally new. That's the way I kind of look at fear or like doubt. Like I'm just stepping into a place that I've never been before. Fear doesn't always mean I shouldn't do it. And fear doesn't mean I'm not capable of doing it. 100%. It just, it's just my body saying, hey, mm -hmm. we in something new right now, you know? So just mm -hmm. be aware. Whoa. Yeah, right? So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's sure. just, it just, I think understanding that you can always reframe the way you think about anything. So that's the way I kind of look at fear. And, and when you start to look at it like that, you're, you, you feel like you have the capability to take the steps forward. Um, and then I always just try and, like I said before, like knowing my why will, is helpful. When you feel those moments, you got to look for that yeah. opening of that. Like, what am I trying to like find within this? And that's kind of the little light that you use to guide you when I'm like, okay, this is really scary and I don't want to step forward. Why? So then I need a reason why I do want to step forward. What's the positive that I'm looking for in this, you know? And so... For me, it was one, challenging myself in a new way with bobsleigh, um, the potential to become a Winter Olympian, the potential to win a medal, keeping that door open and being able to see that possibility yeah. as opposed to looking at the possibility of like something negative happening or whatever. So keeping my, keeping my sights open to where, you know, I'm trying to step towards. For sure. And I think that is such an important point. Um, is yep there is definitely um that fear present and that potential to fail look stupid you know um and that is all our ego trying to protect ourselves so that's our fight or flight right like it doesn't want to go down that route no one wants to be embarrassed um but on the other flip side you know there is definitely um yeah, that huge potential to reach new heights, experience new things, challenge yourself. Um, and that's kind of the area, uh, for me personally, that's the area where most of, of my growth occurs is that sitting in that discomfort and, and really just allowing it, like you said, to just uh, wash over you, acknowledge, yeah, that fear is there. Yeah. Um, but at that same point, like I'm not gonna let that 
that stop you. Um, and I think especially yeah. as um, women in society, like I feel like we're very programmed to um, feel that, that fear and automatically back off and not, and not back ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's super important for us um, to realize that, yeah, when you're sitting in that, like oh, back yourself. Yeah. Um, it's not a bad place things, to be. For sure. And I think mm-hmm. even like a lot of people, like we, they talk about like imposter syndrome or feeling like, you know, they're 100%. not whatever. And it's because you think that when you're in that position, I'm not supposed to feel like this or I'm not supposed to feel like that. So mm-hmm. that's why it's important for me to tell people like, nah, like I was afraid. Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. whole time I was afraid. Like, and so I want when people are in those situations and they feel fair or they feel, you know, whatever, like, I'm not really sure if I know what I'm doing half the time. I don't know why I'm, I've, I'm not sure. Nobody, you know, there's no um, blueprint to life, right? That's the whole, that's the fun of Mm-mm. it. Like, you get to go and figure things out. And so we have this feeling of, like, I should know exactly what to do. I should feel like this. And it's, like, whatever little story you have of how Beyonce feels or Rihanna feels, or how that's a lie. <laughs> and you know what I mean? So just literally understanding that everybody feels all those crazy emotions and that's exactly where you're supposed to be. 100%. And so just... Yeah, letting yourself yeah. feel all of that. And, and that's the fun part of it. A hundred percent. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's so um, so important to acknowledge that um, and to speak about that because, like you said, there's so many people out there um, doing great and amazing things and they look really confident with it. But at the same time, like they're definitely still... Those feelings are present. We're all human beings, right? Like no one is... Uh, no one doesn't experience emotions. We all we all experience that. Um, and yeah, imposter syndrome is real. Let me tell you, that's a that's a real thing, and that's definitely but even, um, yeah something that needs to be more widely spoken about. And I would even say on the, I think a lot of the times that feeling of confidence that we're thinking about is actually on the other side of fear. So you have got, you gotta feel the fear, go through it. And then you kind of like realize like, oh, like I'm capable of it type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so fear can also be like a guiding light for you, a place that you're supposed to go towards. Cause then like, that's what you got to go through. And then after, you know, even like with me, like, so doing bobsleigh and then finishing and then like making the world, the winter Olympics and then winning a medal. It was like, you got to go through all that like funkiness and then you feel that confidence on the other side of it, but it's not necessarily, Mm -hmm. you feel it through the process. Yeah, for sure. I definitely um, agree. I love that letting fear guide you. I feel like I've definitely learned the most and experienced the most in uh, in doing things that scare me. Whenever I'm I come across something and I have a decision to make, I try and make a conscious decision to uh, which one scares me the most. And generally, that is the option that I should be taking. That is. me leveling up, me gaining new experiences and, and, and reaching new heights for sure. Mm-hmm. So I would love to talk to you a little bit about PG rights. Um, this feels like a very um, vulnerable experience for you. So yeah, I would love for you to talk us through a little bit about how PG rights came about how that experience um what that what that did for you what did what did that bring for you um so i feel like i've always been a writer but i've actually been kind of like afraid to kind of say like i'm a writer it's like weird um and especially like you said before like as an athlete sometimes you get this like crazy ton of vision and i started to really identify really strongly with being an athlete and so it felt weird to like do this other thing right Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and my writing is actually super personal for me. Um, it's like, it's what's in my mind, like all the crazy things that are flying around in here. And so, um, for me, it was really just a matter of allowing myself to be seen, allowing myself to be like open. Um, so I think that was the biggest thing for me and allowing myself to, um, embrace this other part Mm -hmm. of myself to say, it's funny because I've always, I'm, I've always been a person who I don't like labels and I don't like putting myself in a box, but I kind of like low key did that with being an athlete. I didn't even realize I I was like putting myself in that. So it was kind of my way of like breaking that box to say like, 
I'm not just this one thing. And that's kind of why I did Winter Olympics too. It was just like, I like being able to be like, there's no one place yeah. that I live. I exist everywhere, you know? And I think it's important to always be just opening and discovering new parts of myself. So that was, so for me, uh, exposing my writing was uh, was breaking my athlete box <laughs> so that I could yeah. kind of be like, well, I'm a writer as well too. Um, and I've just been on this like really crazy, really in-depth spiritual journey. Um, and so it's also been a, a matter of me kind of like working through the things that um, I'm learning and working through um, just what I'm discovering about myself. Um, and I think, you know, we talk about spiritual journeys and the biggest thing I've learned about that, it, it's really about like, discovering, I want to say discovering yourself, but just being aware of the thoughts that are coming into your mind and aware of, you know, who you are, I guess, in a certain kind of way. So a lot of my writing has been about, like, just that awareness of what I'm seeing with my mind, what I'm seeing around me, um, and just really connecting to, like, this other layer that kind of exists in the world um, that sometimes we just tend to overlook. So... For my writing, it's really just, I think it's more of like an exploration of like my being, mm -hmm. an exploration of life, um, and just trying to honor all of that. Yeah, I can completely, um, yeah, completely relate to all of that. I, uh, I'm a writer too. I mean, again, it's never something that I've really um, yeah. <laughs> put out, but I feel like it's such a, um, yeah, I really admired it because I know from what I write, it's such a deeply personal um, experience and it's really me um, yeah, delving into those parts of me, um, exploring myself, exploring different um, avenues. And for me, it's actually a very big exploration. I don't know if you can relate to this. An exploration of my feminine side I feel like um like you said in sport we get very mm -hmm. boxed in and we are in very mm -hmm. um I mean sport in general is a very masculine environment and I feel like um growing up I got really boxed into this this masculine energy and uh cutting off my emotions and writing has always been an, a big exploration uh for me of of that yeah. side of thing I don't know if that is that something you have experienced is that uh is that an area that you kind of delve into within your writing? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Um, like tapping into a little bit more of that feminine energy, mm -hmm. um, creating, flowing, yeah. being, all of that um, kind of inspired. Like when I'm writing, it honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm not writing. It's like, I don't know where these words are coming from. Like they just, mm -hmm. They're just literally just spill them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. So, um, the interesting thing I've kind of learned through the process, though, is like realizing how much you felt like, like you said, with sport, it's like we're heavy into this masculine mm -hmm. energy and just kind of feeling like, OK, if I'm tapping into masculine energy, it's like I'm only allowed to right. live here. And now the way I kind of think about it is like everything lives on a line and everything is like fine. There's polar opposites, but you're allowed to be fluid mm -hmm. between both of those things. Um, and it's cause cause I actually found for a little while when I started tapping into my feminine, I was like, well, now I only can be feminine. Right. right? Yeah. And you flip I gotta that, wear flowy that dresses, other way. Yeah, right. A hundred percent. Right. Right. And it's really actually the beautiful part is when you can play mm -hmm. with both and, you know, like take a little bit of this and take a little, and whatever situation calls. And so it's like learning every aspect of that so that you can then play wherever you want to. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been learning how to like live in my masculine when I want to and yeah. live in my feminine when I want to. But I definitely, I was super disconnected mm -hmm. from my feminine. It's easy. And in our world in general today, it's easy to be masculine. Everything is about doing and striving mm -hmm. and go get a goal and everybody's exactly. doing that. So it's easy to live in masculine. Feminine's a little bit harder to tap into just within our society. Um, even as I find like being in Grenada is amazing because I'm like watching the sunrise, watching the sunset, just yeah. so much nature around me. And like, I feel like nature really taps into Such a that feminine like, energy just yeah yeah like just allowing things to happen and so yeah yeah for sure and i feel like that all kind of ties back around into that theme of success like you were saying like especially in today's society like we're almost forced to live in our masculine constantly and that feminine energy is seen as 
it was weak and like that's not the one that you want and mm-hmm. yeah it's been a really interesting journey um for me for sure just tapping into that that feminine and really finding that that strength within that can i i was just gonna say how do you so how do you define success now Ooh. Just, oh <laughs> um <laughs> That was a really big one for me, actually. I feel like I went through quite a similar journey to you. That's why I really related to a lot of your of your writing. Um, now, for me, success is. Um, I feel like I'm 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 really in a stage now where I'm I'm finding that feminine. Um, so success for me is really um, allowing myself to sit in that, allowing myself to speak my mm-hmm. truth. Um, and, um, yeah, allow myself to be vulnerable to me mm-hmm. now, whenever I feel like I've achieved something or I'm successful, it's because I've really spoken my truth, stayed true to myself and allowed myself to be in that vulnerable energy that now feels successful to me. Um, external things mm-hmm. don't seem to, uh, mm-hmm. bring me as much joy as, as they used to. Um, I'm much less tunnel vision towards mm-hmm. success being material. Um, it's a lot more, um, yeah, fluid now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's been a really interesting yeah. journey, actually, especially from being in track from such a young age. Um, that was quite a difficult one for me to overcome. I still slip back into it, but it's been a, yeah, it's been a good one. Still in it, still discovering new new areas of, of what yeah. success means for sure. Uh, but yeah, definitely every time I, I speak up and, and speak my truth feels like, a success to me now it's been mm-hmm. a nice journey mm-hmm. difficult uncomfortable That's dope. um but uh yeah a good one all the same there's some quick fire questions i would love to ask you so do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert <laughs> i'm an introvert but i can be extroverted if needed mm-hmm. i feel that for sure um, yeah. stickler for schedule or a wave rider oh. you see I'm, I'm such a fluid person I would say I create structure so that I can flow easier so I need yeah. some things to have I need some mm-hmm. level of structure and then you float in. I, but I hate being too boxed in because I like to just kind of exactly, exactly. Love that. Yeah. Um, what are you currently reading or watching um reading um it's called cutting through spiritual materialism Ooh. and i can't remember the name of who wrote it so good actually yeah i'm actually gonna <laughs> it's like really get you to send you know, that to me wow. yes that sounds super interesting in the same way that because you know when you start on the mm-hmm. spiritual journey then your ego starts getting attached to like yeah Ooh, yeah so look at me i'm walking in my truth like <laughs> getting rid of all that <laughs> yeah yeah so it's really good for that um i haven't been watching i actually don't Not watch a lot way. of tv anymore um yeah so I, I i will hop on some shows and then binge them and then like move on with my life but mm-hmm. just reading yeah, right now <laughs> i feel that i feel that um what is your go-to meal and has that changed now you're in Grenada? I feel like you've got so much access to like really fresh, like lovely things. Yeah. Yeah. My aunt has this, like literally her garden is like overflowing. Like this is like, I'm truly learning the like meaning of abundance right now, Ooh. but like sweet potatoes, we got everything, like just pick it from the garden and bring it. Mm. So just everything really local. I'm just trying to eat. Like I just like a plate of veggies. I'm actually decreasing the amount of meat that I'm eating right now. Um, but, you know, lots of, like, kalaloo, okra, um, sweet potato, yams, like, all that kind mm-hmm. of vibe, right? Like, and it's just, like, so fresh, so local. Um, fresh, fresh fish from the sea. Um, if I do eat meat right now, lentils, beans, all that good stuff. It's been so amazing, yeah. And fruits, mangoes. Golden apple, yeah. sugar apple. I kill. Listen, girl, <laughs> you are living right now. Um, and finally, tea or coffee? The most important question. Um, yeah. I'm a coffee addict, but I've stopped drinking coffee because I was actually finding that the caffeine was starting it does. to affect. It me. really does. I have my sleep and stuff. 
So I've been, I lean towards tea now, but if I just, if I am craving something, I'm going to crave tea, coffee, 100%. not tea, but if I'm going to, right, but I'm going to choose for yourself tea. and your health, you need some tea well, yeah. for where I'm at right now. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for giving me your time, especially whilst you're in Grenada. Um, it's been so good to have you on. Um, yeah, thanks for I loved me. having this conversation. Uh, I think it was a super important one for sure. And good luck for your next talk. Hope it all goes well. Thanks. And I'm so happy that you're doing this. I think this is going to be a really great space for you. So. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those walking in your yeah. truth things, yeah. you know. So yeah. we're trying it. We're trying. I'm excited <laughs> for you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>